Alright everybody, welcome back to another Friday Night Magic Tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evan. I'm joined in round one by the local legend Adam Vickers, who uh, has a round one by. Why? Because this is our monthly FNM championship last Friday of the month. It is the monthly championship, so all winners during the month get a round one by. So Adam enjoying that as well, I believe, is Nick Reed and Alec Myers. Alec in a surprise move, having a bye to something. Uh, so we're already into our round one feature match. Four rounds tonight. Not sure how many people are here. Around 20, it looks like. But on the left, it's Brandon Gibbs playing black-white mid-range. You see him off to the races with a turn two pack right. His opponent is Scotty Wright, representing... He's the only, only half of the Wright brothers here this week. Uh, playing Esper Control. Would be a pretty good uh, Zori Strong. Yep, these guys uh, just got back... Scotty, his brother Jonathan and Garrett just got back from Grand Prix Cincinnati, where Jonathan made day two and finished 108th, which was eight spots out of the money. Pretty good. Congratulations. Congratulations, you get screwed. <laughs> uh, if you'd have had a little bit better tiebreakers, you would have. You well, know, he did very well on day one and not so much on day two. Mm. I apologize, I'm, I'm falling way behind here. I came like I do every week. I was here super early, had everything set up. Everything was going great. Then and you came in here. And then the computer crashed. It didn't crash, it just decided to shut down. Hmm. No big deal. Neither did an app. Alright. So, things have stabilized here. Scotty is a joyous, charmed... A joyous, charmed. One uh, one pack rat, but still facing down a token from the uh, from the other. I think Scotty just had the syncopate in his hand and from looked, the early thought seize. Yeah, it looked like the thought seize. Uh, yeah, took a care. The took a dissolve. Yeah, I believe that's what you're going for. You're trying to get there. And uh, quick shout out to the uh, few of you that are watching live. I know that we are about the I don't know at this point, at least third, probably more like fifth to tenth, uh, most lucrative stream. But it's the most important. I'm well, thinking. I mean, it's the only one that fe features me eating an apple and, and you being you. Um, but uh, yes, we do have the Star City Invitational this weekend, which of course starts on Friday. And then I believe we're still getting the remnants of the Magic Online Championship. Which I'm sure this is much better to look at than... Well, I don't understand why anyone would want to watch two people playing Magic Online but neither of them is the like not listening. Yeah, I, I have a hard time watching streams in general because it's it's kind of boring. Um, but you d it's definitely going to be worse when you're watching two people commentate, uh, basically a video game that they're not in. I've always wanted to find somebody streaming and have them play me, and then I guess what they're going to play next. Like, <laughs> oh, you're just going to play this now. You're a genius. It almost happened one time. So Scotty doing what his de deck does best, which is to draw a card and say go. Brandon on the uh, on the pack rat plan here. Scotty is representing Quicken into Supreme Verdict, though I don't know if the Esper decks actually play a Quicken. I think I saw him messing with his deck earlier, and I think he may have had one. So he's just going to rev for a two here, digging for some kind of answer. And this is the problem. I was actually playing. Uh, you know, Gibbs' deck is uh, black-white, but it, it's playing right now currently like a, a mono-black devotion deck. Yeah. And I was playing uh, before the tournament tonight with your mono-black deck against Garrett, who was playing blue-white control. And it seems like the only cards that matter in that matchup for the black deck are um, Thought Seas, Underworld Connections, and Mutavolts. Yeah, pretty much. And the fact that Brandon has drawn just the one Mutavolt is incredibly relevant. Because um, now Scotty can deal with the pack rat in a variety of ways. But he's still at 11. Yeah, he's, and there's a vault. Yes. He's already used the charm. Mm -hmm. So he does find a Sphinx's Red, which effectively trades for the pack rat, but still facing down an active Muta Vault, an opponent who uh, has missed several land drops, so you know his hand is just all gas. And he's off of double black, too. So. It's main deck Sin Collectors. Wow. Yeah, I think it's just a one of. It's pretty mean. He was talking to me about doing that today, and I told him I was going to do one to rest main deck. So Scotty has a syncope here, but Brandon, uh, it's not like he was playing around it. He's, he's stuck on yeah. mana. He has no choice, but uh, that syncopate's not going to be good enough. He's going to syncopate it for one anyway, just to keep mm. him. I don't... 
I don't understand. I think that's unnecessary. What 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 card could Brandon play? I mean, he hasn't played a land. I mean, the only thing that he could play would be a Thought Seed, and you're already giving him two spells. Well, he hasn't played a land, so I guess you can tap him out and so that uh, Pack Rind is... Pack, yeah, yeah but, if he follows up with that. But he obviously, uh, but he obviously just drew the Sin Collector, otherwise yeah, he would have played it. it. That's two demons, two pack rats, and one downfall. Here's downfall, yeah. Uh, at this point, I think you just take a pack rat, right? Yeah. His hand, it looks like... Well, his hand looks like Verdict, Dissolve, and I think that's it. I think so. The demons are oh, almost... Oh, because... No, yeah, okay. Yeah, the Thought Seed came out. It got the... So it dissolved, I need you the Supreme. Yeah, if I'm, yeah, if I'm Brandon, I just pile in here. Put him on a 3 Yeah, there's clock. no point. I mean, you can try and follow up with a pack and just get the dissolve out. Well, there's no there's no reason not to. Well, actually, I like this better because then you just make Scotty waste his mana. Yeah. Because you already have threats in your yeah. hand. These here on Sin Collector. So Scotty going to drop down to three here, because we know he just drew the D-Sphere. Brandon running out a demon, which uh, meets the dissolve. We knew about Scotty pushes a card to the bottom, so we're drawing live here. She got the... He's got the second mutavolt, so I think. Scotty is dead on board. He needs a Jace here. Or a Quicken. Or a Quicken Verdict. Or I think an Elspeth. Revelation in his hand. Revelation will buy him a turn. He'll, he'll survive at one. Yeah. And if he does it this way, he can find a land to play. I think he did draw his Elspeth there, it looked like. But he did not draw a land. I said dissolve. Revoke existence. Called? Is it a revoke? Yeah, I believe so. Supreme Verdict. Mm -hmm. And I can't okay, take it back. I would play the pack rat, so Scotty needs a lot of help here. There's a tension here. here. But still that's not no. Yeah. yeah. He would be able to answer the pack rat. There's a mute vote on top, that would have helped. But uh, his real out, his real out in that situation is he needs Elspeth. He knew Elspeth is gonna to die to the hero's downfall that we saw in the in the thought seas, but still it buys Wait, you him. Need the three blockers? Yeah, you, you well you actually get to chump one and eat another one of the mutable. Yeah, true. So it's it's a pretty huge huge play there. But all right, so game two underway. Scotty down a game. He uh, couldn't couldn't answer pack rat early, and then fell to two mutables from the black white mid range deck of Brandon Gibbs. So going to the sideboard here, uh, Gibbs is probably going to pick up some duress effects, probably some kind of uh, revoke existence effect for uh, I think he has them for um, D spheres and uh, other problem uh, artifacts should they come in. She told me I needed to switch mine from the blue to the white just for revoke existence. So Blair. here, here is our. That's the revoke, right? Revoke, yeah, it's revoke. Elspeth, There's glare. Thought sees. Glare of heresy. Thought sees and heroes downfall. So this is a very interesting hand. I think you take a thought sees simply because it's the only thing that Brandon could cast. Yeah, because he kept a uh, one land hand. He kept so, a one land hand. It was a temple on the draw. So it's not the worst thing in the world. No, but the one thing I was always taught: never keep a one land hand. Who taught you that? Travis Tomlin. Oh. That maybe Mike Flores. No. So Scotty, uh, I wish. Scotty, willing to let his hand get uh, torn up here a little bit. Um, so there is Supreme Verdict in four lands. Okay. Oh, well, well, based on that hand of Scotty's, which is now embarrassing. Is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it makes taking the Elspeth a lot more uh, reasonable here because there was nothing in Scotty's hand that he was really afraid of losing to a thought seize anyway. When we used to play uh, fairies in the mirror, Brandon Gibbs used to keep hands like that just so it made my thought seizes worse. Here's Me another too. thought seize. <sighs> so now what do we want to take? Uh, you can. D you don't have to take the thought seize because it's useless. Well, I mean, right it's now it's, it's, right it's now. tough. It's tough to f to figure out how relevant it's going to be later. 
I guess you take the Hero's Downfall or the Thought Seize. The other two cards are so so uh, specific in terms of their application. So we're leaving card on top. Clearly some form of business. There's usually room for three in here as we see a uh, Thought Seize Net nothing. And then Scotty. Top deck card. He, card he, well, it was the card left on top with the scry, so. Um, I was actually talking to the carrot about this earlier. He, uh, even though you scry into it, it still has to be on the top of your deck. Whoops! <laughs> so this is going to be really good for Scotty. So I figure you give him the Elspeth of the two Jaces, yeah. right? Yeah. And Brandon's already burned through his. Uh, Two thought seeds. Yeah, he at least had declare and mm -hmm. mean, so that will help. Yeah, and, and because of that, Scotty's not even taking the Elspeth. He's just going to win this game with an Aether Lug, I think. I think is his plan. Or keep upping Jace and just. Uh, There's a Sim Collector. It's going to whiff, but it's at least going to put a body on board. I mean, because really all Scotty has to do is just up Jace right now mm -hmm. and just ultimate. I would think that he could do that in the six turns. Huh? So Brandon finds probably what the best card is here against uh, an opponent who has no counter magic in his hand, which is Underworld Connections. Not only is on the mold, but uh, this is going to help him dig out of uh, this Get situation. As we know, the two cards left in his hand are completely reactive. Uh, they do nothing. A, a revoke and a glare of heresy. Interesting that Scotty chose to tick up uh, the Jace last turn, because he did have the opportunity to dig with Jace, mm -hmm. evaluate the cards, then replay a Jace and tick it up. I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah, well there's an Elspeth, the same situation as last time. I think if I'm Scotty, I'd take the D Sphere and the uh, Elspeth well, again. I, uh, we have to revoke and the glare, so I mean. Uh, well, but this way, you at least net the land. Yeah. You get another card out of your deck as well. I mean, these are minimal edges, but all Elspeth does at this point is, is make three dudes. Is make three dudes. So if you want to play a six mana Spectral Procession, yeah. I mean, it is a it is a play. play we talked about. Play a second Jace, tick it up. Plays a Watery Grave. What did he take off the split? <laughs> I was not looking, but not paying attention. Alright, we can watch a replay. <laughs> Alright, Alright, good deal. <laughs> so Brandon going to start digging out of this with his Underworld Connections. Thought Seeds would be uh, pretty good right now. Yep. Keep Jace honest there. There is another land. He's got free reign to resolve something here. And he just passes back. What is that? Revelation? There's a Rev, a Syncopate, I believe a Dissolve, and the Elspeth we know about. And a Jace. I mean, at this point, uh, Scotty's just got to kind of keep drawing lands until he can play Elspeth and protect it the same turn. Yeah, that's all you... So there's no point not to... two mana away from that. Of course, Brandon's drawing two cards a turn. He can find a, dis a uh, duress or a thought seize to disrupt that plan, but... I mean, at the end of turn, you're just going to rev here. I guess the question is you could rev now and try and find another land. Don't mm. think that's necessarily. No, uh, that's not. If you just need. Also, you can just what do this. the Jace? Is that Dark Betrayal? A D Sphere and another Plains? So I think it would be. And then you just do it in that road, Dark Betrayal, the land, and the. 
Uh, I see it. Yeah, I would put the land with the D sphere. Because giving him the D sphere is basically a, a free card. So he's just getting, he's just netting a land there. Yeah, well, I mean, you can always get, if he does D sphere, you can always get it back. <coughs> with the, um... There is the Dark Betrayal, which we knew about on the Sin Collector. Well, I guess he was afraid of Underworld on, I mean, D3 on the Underworld connections. Yeah. But he can still get rid of it. I mean, as long as Scotty has a D-Sphere and an Elspeth, there's... Brandon has the perfect answers in his hand. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Syncopate for more than enough. So we faded one discard spell here. We need to find two more lands and another one. Mm. So Scotty just gonna and, and also at this point, any if Scotty finds his Aetherling, and I don't know how many he's playing in this deck, but if he finds his Aetherling, it's effectively game over. I think well, this Blood Baron's going to affect the uh, math here a little bit, but Scotty surely it should has be to. So, Just Rev for yeah. four. Rev for five. Yeah. I mean, the Blood Baron is like the... The, the four cost cards in this deck, the Demons and the uh, Blood Barons and all those things, they're, they're so inconsequential. They're only relevant when Scotty's exhausted all of his... Resources, yeah. yeah. But I think you'd almost control with the chase and play the other. Well, he has a play. Going for, uh, he's going for it. Maybe he draw, maybe he has drawn a negate. He has a sinker to fade. Well, it, there it is. Well, what are we doing here? Oh, okay. But he knows he's now tapped out. He knows his opponent has a glare and a revoke. Why would you not just play the Elspeth and then leave the the, three for the mana open up for Dissolve? Because yeah. he has a Dissolve in his hand, for sure, right? I know that he has a Synchropay, for sure. But I guess he needed to get rid of the Blood Baron. So let's clear the way here. I do not like this play from... It, it looks like it wouldn't have mattered anyway, as uh, Brandon drew another Thoughtseize. So he could have but cleared still, the way. It is far worse because you just take the Revelation. Mm -hmm. And then you get back your connections. Yep, so two lands, J syncopate, and dissolve. Ah. There's a glare. Mm -hmm. And there's a revoke. I have to ask him about that. I just. I mean, Scotty's played this deck a lot. I mean, I guess. I mean, I would assume that you could get, afford to get hit by the Blood Baron. But. Is he just going to win with uh, Jace, maybe? Is that his plan? I guess, but still, why would not you want Elspeth in that plan? I guess you're just more scared of the uh, Underworld connections? I guess. So we know he can counter this, it's just a matter of does he want to syncopate or does he want to dissolve. He decides to dissolve, leaving up a... Uh, a syncopate for anything Brandon should choose to cast um, I think, I mean, this turn as well. Doing that, I think Scotty's won this one. He is just trying to tick up and beat him with Jace. I suppose. Brandon really doesn't have any pressure, but this would have been way over with uh, Elspeth in play. Ooh, I did not like that Gather has now included the super emo Jace from the dual decks. It's almost impossible to read anyway. We well, can change the. He does. Uh, he's looking around the corner to see why Scotty made that play. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, they're playing magic. Huh. That's better. Three old man's chase right there. But Three. he does ultimate on eight. So we are two turns away. Two turns away. Oh, see, now this is very dangerous too. I guess we've already exp expended our syncopate here on the. Uh, I mean, because when we tap out there, we're subject to Hero's Downfall. 
Oh, Brandon only has one card. He's a plane. At this point, I'm overthinking the, the game. The game is over. Scotty's also at 19, I believe, because of the... Uh... About six. Yeah, I don't think it matters. No, this is... But, uh... Yeah. That's... I, I would have gone out there and corrected it if it wasn't pretty obvious that Brandon was going to skip yeah, at that point. Yeah, which so a very interesting line uh, that Scotty chose. It worked out for him. Uh, which we'll Brandon kept an interesting line of keeping one lane in the Yeah, Brandon is uh, Brandon did fall prey to the. And Brandon kept one lane again at the temple. All right, so we're into the decider here. Just over ten minutes remaining in the round. Uh, Brandon. On the play here, trying to win the decider. Both players mulling down to six in this final game. Brandon is clearly the beat down. We want a pack right here is what we want. That's fine. Um, Elspeth, Thought Sees, D-Sphere, Needle, Sphinx's Revelation, and a Blue-Black Temple. Or it's either Revelation or Thought Sees, I would think. Depending on your hand, you might take a D-Sphere here too, because if you have a pack, I, I figure he doesn't. Pack. If you well, have if a pack, have a pack rat, rat, it can be needled into. Yes, but I mean that's better than getting sphered because you at least have yeah. a one-one. If you had a mute vault, then it's, I said it's really tough to to figure this out, not knowing what's in Brandon's hand here. The well, thought, we'll the, the thought sees. Yeah, the thought sees is the safest choice, I think. Well, also we know that Scotty only has two lands, so that's yeah. another. He has three now, as he drew the blue-white temple off the top. Brimax? Uh, is this a cyborg card? I would think. I would think so. So this is going to eat that D-sphere, right? Yep. And Scotty misses his land drop here, so Scotty on three lands. Brennan needs another black. And No, wait, Scotty didn't miss his land drop. No. My bad. Yeah. Brennan needed that... If he, if he plays demon here, oh, he doesn't have. He can't demon have. Yeah, here. he only has two. Well, even if he played demon here, it would not be the greatest of plays because another thought sees Elspeth Needle Sphinx is rev. Uh, I think you can take the rev here. Is this going to draw the card? Yeah. Well, it's it's a delayed draw. Wow. I think he might do the Elspeth. He took Needle. Uh, Needle's the only card I would not consider. No, because there's really nothing for him to name. I mean, he can needle Mutavolt here. Yeah. As he draws a Chase Architect of Thought off the top here. He's got a thinker on the scry as he plays a Temple of Enlightenment. Just passes back. Brandon really needs a dress here. There's a pack rat. That's fine, but... I guess that's why he took the needle, but... Yeah, but you still have Mutavolt, and that can still make the pack rat a 2-2. I don't think he really has enough spells to discord to the pack rat right now. Well, Brandon got a second black though, so that helps from another temple. But Uh, the chat talking about what's going on in the Invitational right now. I thought it was funny. I saw a video on YouTube today where they did like a two-minute recap of Season 1 because they're new in that Players' Championship. Yeah. Video. And all it was was, here's a recap of all of our employees. Oh, no. Like, they at the very end, they just randomly threw up a imagine. slide of like all the other people in the yeah. top ten that aren't employees. I can't imagine why they would do that. I don't understand why people don't riot against them. Like... Their, their players, of course, travel to every event because they ride with them, they they play the store's cards, what? they get free entry, no. and they're competing in the same tournaments no. for the same money as everyone else. And I know, and it's pretty cool when they win that event. Well, it's also fun that, like, uh, I don't know, Wizards of the Coast, uh, if you're an employee of Wizards, you can't play on yeah, the Pro yeah, Tour. Play, yeah. If you're if you're a member, of, if you work at Pepsi, you can't win the Pepsi sweepstakes. Why? Because of conflict of interest. You can't even get free Pepsi. With Star City, it's... Uh, it's just and then like, when they win it... Everybody's like, oh yeah, it's cool. Now, to be fair, they are very good players. They are. And, uh, and it's, I know Starcy is trying to build a brand. It's not like an, an accident that they're doing this, but at the same time, it's very... Uh, it, it, it just seems... <laughs> I don't know. I just hate it when it's like... 
It was also funny, too, because it's like Hugh Jensen rolls out to a huge lead by top eighting five in a row and winning one. But then Brian Braun Dwin uh, came back strong. Yeah, because Hugh didn't play him anymore because, like, they're all on the East Coast and he lives in Vegas. <laughs> and Brian Braun Dwin works, works for Star City. He who he used to. Well, he, he's one he of their sponsored players, wrote, yeah. but, I mean, he doesn't live in Roanoke. No, and, just like Brad Nelson and... Uh, all those guys, what their job is, they're 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 just inventory. They yeah. just sort cards and stuff like that, and then they produce content. But, like, I don't know. All right. So we're serving in here with this Mutavolt and a pack rat. And this card. So taking... It Five total here, so we're missing a pack rat token. And then, in a turn, revelation. Rev for two. No. no. Uh, Changing our mind. I mean, he still has that else for two, which I assume he's gonna. Uh. The chat suggesting that I'm just jealous of Chris Van Meter's beard, which. Mm. I don't know, have you seen his beard? I saw beard? that. He was playing Miracles today and he got... Have you beat. seen his beard? It was beard? fine. I mean, it's not... It's unkempt. You gotta, you gotta comb that out. I think the Sharks is better. We're going for quality, not quantity of beard. Alright, so Scotty decides not to rev, but then slams an Elspeth. If Brandon does not have a hero's downfall immediately here... Which it's obvious that he is not, because mm. he would have cast it so quickly. Uh, even a glare. Yes. That he's going to. I think a second activation from from Elspeth is going to uh, possibly put this game out of reach. I think it's going to get him enough time because he still has a revelation in his hand. There's no. I don't know. It's really tough. Which Brandon's not gonna. I think you would have to attack with the Mute of Alt. You're gonna lose the Mute of Alt. I mean, you're. But I, I don't think you have the. If I'm Scott, if I'm Scotty here, I double block the Mute of Alt and chunk well, I mean, the pack. I mean, he didn't rat. even block. He didn't attack the. I mean, I think you'd have to just to negate. Are we attacking Scotty or are we attacking Elspeth? I'd assume. Does it matter? Oh, he didn't attack with the Mutavolt, I no, apologize. No, he didn't, no, he didn't, but I think, I think he should have. Well, There's an Obsidant. That's probably the best card that Brandon can come up with. This game swings drastically now, as uh, Scotty's few answers to uh, Obsidant are uh, Ultimate pri uh, Dark Betrayal. Dark Betrayal, which is uh, Sorcery, isn't it? Star Betrayal on his an instant, I believe. And Faded Retribution, which he may not even have in his deck anymore. Faded Retribution also going to destroy his Elspeth. Quick and Supreme Verdict, I guess? Yeah. If he plays that. Which I think he's going to have to... He's going to have to attack with that Mute of Alt this time. But he never did anything other than... Because, I mean, it's fine taking away his life, but he had that revelation. Mm -hmm. And I just heard someone out there say, drop a deuce on a mechanical bull. So. That's what Brandon Gibbs is pretty much doing right now. So after that, obviously that triggers Scotty at five here. But we know his life total is a... F <laughs> He can't attack with the opposite of that because it Azorius Charm. Yeah, but I don't know if Azorius Charms are still in Scotty's deck or not. I though. still think that you'd even try it because you, you're not gonna you're not gonna keep winning by flashing them in and flashing them out because of that. There's the ref. and there's just gonna be tokens and tokens and tokens. And there was a hero of some mines, so that works. Is Scotty up against it here? I don't think so. Well, he has no way to win the game here. He's also up against the clock. Yeah, true. Which, that would just be a draw for both. Yeah. Which I think he... Both these guys playing grindy decks, but both these guys also uh, known for slow sideboarding and shuffling. 
Gotta do something even if it's wrong. Those two soldier tokens are not going to attack ten times. I mean, I think Scotty's just choosing which lane to play right now. And... Mutavolt. I mean, at this point, Scotty's just playing for the draw. Well, he's had another revelation in his hand, but still. I mean, revelate. Oh, there you go. It's an instant. Yep. In response to the trigger. So, still going to lose the life, but uh, Obs of that is down. I imagine Brain only plays one of those. Uh, probably two, I would think. Is he playing side. main? I would assume they would all be in this side. Yeah. That's what I've seen most. Two to three most of the time. Well, especially in our room, where things are a little bit more aggro than they are control, I, I would probably have them in the board. Some after you perform an attack, that hits, you may assign the focus of your ship for 32 points. Will you put the stealth device on again? Alright. So there's time in the round. So these guys were more than... you more than, than response. More than likely. We're looking at a draw here, so there's a rev for six. Looks like five. And what I hate about this is I'm not going to have a little break in between rounds. To eat your apple. I know, right? So, Thought Seas resolves Aetherling is the choice. Because that the could have ended the game. Can Scotty turn one? Brandon's only going to get two attack stabs. I mean, I would think that would be... Can we just scoop it up, up here? I mean, it would be enough if he draws another land, wouldn't it? Well, Scotty has, Make a, last, a, rat. Scotty has a last breath, so this game is over. Uh, last breath's not going to do it. Because he can activate the Mutavolt or... Um, he has a Mutavolt. Scotty can chump. I understand that, but I mean, last breath, the rats are going to be over. No, the Mutavolt. Oh. Last breath is Mutavolt. Oh, true. Yeah, you can do that. So basically attacks four, six, and six. What if? And that's assuming Scotty has nothing else. Did Brandon not make one? Oh, why didn't he do that? Did he have the mana too? Yeah. Serve in with both rats. I don't know. Okay. Underworld connections in a game when you're in turn two of turns is not... No. Not very good. I would have definitely made a rat at the end of turn and then hoped I drew another land to draw. Make two more rats. But. Or even activate the Mutavolt. Alright. He's gonna draw a card. <laughs> and I draw a card that's not gonna win me the game. Nope. Because I have two pack rats. And I'm not gonna activate my Mutavolt and not attack with it. I'm gonna thought to you. No risk. Could have made a pack rat. Gentlemen. Holy crap. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He's attacking for 11. He can block. No, he's attacking for. That's a revoke. Oh, no, eight. that's one of the old last crafts. Last crafts in the Eight. Yeah, he's attacking for 8 here, right? Uh -huh. Why are we ever tapping that beautiful? Yep. Okay, now I understand. He's last pressing up okay. to 13. Now it's physically impossible for for Brandon to kill him. So. If you would have made that back rat instead of the underworld connection, or even the one at the end of the turn, that would have been so much better. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but I think he could have won. <laughs> yeah, he could have. Yep. Can Scotty do 19 damage here? It's over, who cares? <laughs> Alright, not the best game one we've ever had. I mean, there's some good magic there, but yeah. uh, draw kills it, so we're going to go outside, expedite this thing, and move on into round two. Oh. Get, the buys are back in it! The big, <laughs> the, the big boys are playing now. Time to go one and four.